Yes, it is I, your humble host, Bill Hatch the Third, coming to you live from the palatial home studios of Bald Spots Productions here in the beautiful city of Santa Ana, California. Joining me from a more than acceptable safe social distance through the miracle of telephony is my guest for today for this very special episode of Not Quite After Midnight, G.S. Gary. How you doing, Gary? Jerry. Sorry, Jerry. Oh, Jerry. I knew I'd mess it up. That's all right. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> how, how you doing? Thanks for having me I'm on. doing all right. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. A little, little under the weather, but... Yeah, but you're here. Above ground's a good deck right <laughs> You're here. Yeah, You're here. here. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, we had an, we had another guest uh, scheduled, but she also is sick. You must have caught the same thing, and uh, and she decided yeah. to reschedule. Could be. Um, but uh, uh, but yeah, better than just straight canceling, I guess. But uh, um, but yeah, um, yeah. So good that you're more than a safe social distance. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm all the way in Florida, so don't worry. Florida, you get there. You're in the. You're definitely in your rainy season. How's the weather out there? It's actually quite nice out. Uh, it's been a little chilly. It's supposed to get you know cold for Florida here over the weekend, but I mean it's yeah. been nice. It gets cold overnight, and then it's nice and warm in the day. Yeah, being in uh, in Southern California, I often have to uh, have to uh, apologize for my California weather. Um, you know, we think we think it's cold yeah. when it hits the 60s, and uh, and I'm talking to Canadian guests, and they're like, "Yeah, it's uh, it's like in the 30s here, eh?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. The 60s in California is like sweater weather. That's like here in Florida. It's like people looking for an excuse to uh, wear their yeah. hoodies. So it's like 40, 55, 60 degrees. Everybody's out in their hoodies. Yeah, all the all the southern states are like, "Oh, what what are you doing wearing shorts and t-shirts over here?" <laughs> Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. So uh, yeah, though um, no, it's funny that I mess up your name. I used to have a room. I've only known one other Jerry that spelled their name with a G. Everybody else is a Gary with the G. And uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I used to have a roommate uh, who uh, whose name was Jer was uh, Jerry with a uh, with a G. Yeah, no, it's funny. I, I used to work at Amazon and. Uh... There was a guy that I worked with, and he messed my name up all the time on purpose. I know it was on purpose because he'd be like, Gary, I'd be like, no, it's Jerry. And then he would go and introduce me to people like, oh, yeah, here's Gary. I'm like, oh, man, here's this guy. But he would go around, and, and I just felt like it was an inside joke. Like, he just kept doing this. So I was like, whatever, I'm just Gary, I guess. It's like uh, Parks and Rec, right? The guy uh, the guy that works for them, Gary, turns into Jerry, turns into Larry, yeah. and then back to actually <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, at, at least it's some permutation of the written uh, form of your name. I, I used to get a lot of bobs. Oh, no one. No, no one wants Unless to be Bob. Bob. Even Bob doesn't want to be Bob. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, but yeah. So you've written a book, uh, "Meth, Murder, and Amazon." Yes, that's right. Um. Yep. Now, uh, let's see. Meth and murder makes me think that it's some kind of uh, some kind of uh, murder mystery horror type of thing. But then you add in the Amazon, and I'm thinking, okay, there's a joke here. So, what uh, what kind of book is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, Meth, Murder, and Amazon is first and foremost a comedy. Um, I, I did write it in a, a very unique style. Uh, I kind of break the rules for writing, right? You know, you're not supposed to use one on sentences. Right. You're not supposed to, uh, you know, misspell words. And, you know, I do those things on purpose. Okay. You know, if you're going to write something, why not, why not try to do it differently? <laughs> and so my book reads almost like, you know, me and you were having a conversation or looking up comedy. And so, you know, I try to keep it really relatable like that and, you know, just bring something fresh. Nice. Nice. Um, so what uh, what basically is it about? What's, uh, what's so, going on? So, uh, you know, the saying, uh, bad things happen to good people. 100% yeah. true, you know, perception is reality, all those, um, you know, sayings are, are absolutely true. And so uh, I had a situation when I was actually selling my house in Colorado. And uh, along the way, we have an open house. <clears throat> I'm actually visiting my mom in Florida at the time. So I'm not there in the state. We have an open house. And, uh, you know, the realtors show up, they start going through the, the lower downstairs, go up into the guest bedroom, and they say, they say a body under the bed. 
They scream, they freak out, they run out the house, and they call the cops on me. And they say that I must have murdered one of my children and hit the body under the bed. And that's really why I wasn't there. Four days okay. later, they, they, they call me up and they're like, oh, hey, Jerry, by the way, uh, we smelled something burning in your garage. It smelled like burning plastic. Do you know what that means? I'm like, Is, was something burning? Was there like electrical fire or something? And they're like, no, uh, burning plastic means meth. So we're going to have, you're going to have to get a meth test done because we think you're making meth in your two car garage. <laughs> and so <laughs> that's right. So I'm basically the reincarnation of uh, Heisenberg from Breaking Bad now, okay. uh, according to my real estate, real estate agents. And so uh, the book is, you know, essentially a, a really funny uh, roller coaster of, of humor and suspense, a uh, six month journey to sell my house and, you know, basically move away from the madness. And so, you know, they're like, hey, your house is only supposed to be on the market 30 days. I have one real estate agent uh, end up having to fire him because he's not even living in Colorado. He's living in a different state. Go to the second real estate agent. These are the ones that accuse me of, you know, making meth and, you know, murdering my kids. And then, you know, I have to fire them, go talk to the news, that goes downhill. So it's just like, you know, Murphy's Law, you know, what can go wrong will go wrong. And it's just 100% the case. So I took this story that kind of happened to me and I put a really funny spin on it, you know, um, you know kind of turned lemons into lemonade, if you will. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and I was going to say, uh, moving from Colorado to Florida doesn't exactly sound like moving away from the madness. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a different kind of madness for sure. Um, Absolutely. But, you know, whenever, whenever this happened, they're like, well, you know, uh, methamphetamine is like an epidemic in Colorado. It's a really yeah. bad, uh, you know, it's really bad here. It's basically like the meth capital of the world. And I was like, well, you've met my family like 20 times. Like, you guys are being crazy. Like, I, I'm, I feel like I'm a pretty nice guy, right? Like, I'm a, I'm a family man. I have, yeah. you know, a couple of degrees. Like, I think they're just stereotyping me. They must have watched Breaking Bad recently or something because you yeah. know the scene where Jesse and uh, Walter are in the basement making meth while they're doing the open house. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what happened. They must have just watched it and they're like, yeah, this this guy's Walter White, you know, reincarnated. And I was like, this is so stupid. Jerry White. Um... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I, I mean, you know, I take those things right from Breaking Bad, like Heisenberg, you know, I kind of come up with my own little uh, hidden identity uh Reisenberg right because he uses rice and they're like he's gonna poison the bad guy and stuff and I take funny ele like elements like that from Breaking Bad and some other you know um different shows and kind of add to it and put my own little spin on it and so you know I, I could have went you know the more dark route and just really you know turn this into like a horror story but I was like there's so many horror stories but like where's the big comedies at you know there's plenty of good funny books out there but there's, there's not a lot of, you know, different kind of stories like that. And so it's like, hey, yeah. there on Amazon. I worked at Amazon when this is all going on. So it's like, this could be a catchy title. But even like, even that ended up backfiring on me because, you know, I have Instagram, I have um, LinkedIn, I have my own website. I get banned from Instagram. Like I, when I first came out with this story, almost every day I would post something, meth murder on Amazon, boom, your account is banned for 24 hours. We have to verify your content, and I'm like, this this is probably around the time that you know all the bad publicity is coming out through for Amazon. You know, like how they treat right. their workers, and so they're probably like, oh, this guy is like trying to fake news to Amazon and saying like they're they're doing something with math and murder. And I was like, guys, come on, you just gotta look at the content. But now it went on for like that for like three months. Every time I post them, boom, instantly wow. banned. And so I would start reaching out to Instagram, be like, guys, what are you doing? Like. I, I actually ended up winning some awards for this. I'm like, oh, maybe if maybe now they'll see, right? Like it's a it's it's a funny story, right? Like I'm not talking bad about them. I'm not right. doing anything derogatory, but now they didn't care. They must have been like, yeah, this is fake news. So you know, ban this guy. Yeah, yeah. You you hit the right words. That's uh, probably about what happened. Um, yeah, I have another uh, another guest. He's been on a couple times. Uh, um, Joseph M. Leonard. Um, he wrote uh, a book called terror strikes coming to a city near you um and uh he got uh, he got permanently banned from facebook oh, no. um for uh for some of his stuff uh, but uh, um but yeah um yeah so uh so at yeah. least it was just a 24-hour ban 
Oh, yeah, but it would be every single day. You know, I try to be consistent and post on their daily. Every time I would post one post, boom, you're banned. Go wow. go a couple of days, post again, boom, you're banned. And it kept going on for months and months on end. Like, <laughs> I would send messages to Instagram. They'd be like, yeah, we'll review your account. Or they just never respond, you know, because they're terrible at like, getting back to anybody. Right. And so then people are like, hey, you should go to Facebook. I'm like, if I'm getting banned on Instagram, Facebook owns Instagram. Like, why would I right. go over there just so I could get banned over there? And so, you know, I, I, I end up doing a lot of stuff on LinkedIn to the professional stuff that'll ban me over there. So I, I appreciate those guys. That's funny. Yeah. Um, no. So, uh, so how'd you get into uh, into writing? Um, what uh, what brought you to this uh, terrible end? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I think it's almost like kind of like a full picture, you know, a full circle kind of thing. My whenever I was growing up, my dad actually owned a bookbinding business. So, okay. You know, spiral backs, paperbacks, hardbacks. Mm -hmm. He owned the business that you know, essentially put all the books together and then, you know, glued the spines on the back or wrapped the spirals on it. You know, I hated it. I was working since I was like 10, 12 years old. So I was like, this is like the worst job ever. Why would anybody open up a business like this? But I've learned it a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I end up actually having a situation at work. We do a lot of report writing. And a uh, guy that works for me, he uh, he turns in a report and the customer calls me and, and she's like, hey, Jerry, the, uh, the report that you guys gave me is completely identical from last year. I was like, oh no, please, please tell me that's not true. Cause it's like a 500 page report. Right. It makes it worse since I'm the one who wrote the report the year before. So the guy took my report, oh, no. put his name on it, and essentially just submits it to her. So I start going through the report. I'm like, yep, same, yep, same. I'm like, yeah, this is like 90% the same. And I was like, oh. yes, Mr. Customer, like, uh, yep, this is totally copied. What can I do? Like, how can I make this right? And so. It ends up taking me like two and a half months to rewrite the report. And it goes from like about 450 pages to almost 800 pages. And I had to rewrite it from scratch, update Ouch. all the information. Yeah, and our reports are like, hey, who did you interview or what what settings did you observe or what document did you review? And so there's 380 plus controls that I have to go and document every single thing. And so by the time I got done with this, I was like, man, I, I feel like I just wrote a novel. And I had this story that happened to me and my family. I was like, that's it. I'm going to write it. And so that's literally how it happened. I, I got done with that. It was like middle of September 2021. And I started writing October 1st, 2021. And I, I had it out by about February of the next year. Nice. That's a, that's a pretty quick turnaround for a uh, for first book. Um, yeah. Let's see. You said you'd uh, won some awards. Uh, what kind of awards would you want for it? Yeah, so uh, I just recently won an award uh, last year, or last last week on Friday, I won a Literary Titan Silver Brook Award. Um, there's Reader's Favorite. I won uh, two awards for them, one actually for the audio book. It won uh, Best Nonfiction Audio Book, which is pretty hilarious because if you go and look at the titles, it's like up there with one of them is like a book on quantum mechanics. I actually outplayed them, so I was like, all right, my book's <laughs> better than quantum mechanics. Uh, but it's... <laughs> And then uh, I, I won two awards for like the global ebook awards, and then uh, there's another one that's like the the book marketing global network. And so I ended up winning six awards so far. Um, nice. You know, and it just kind of worked out like that. And so you know, I'm writing this book as I'm going along, and I'm like, man, how can I make this different? And so that's when I was like, man, like everybody's like, hey, you got to follow the rules of writing. I'm like, no, like I'm gonna break the rules, right? I'm gonna do this so different that people are gonna like remember the story for how different it was besides, you know, the crazy <laughs> title. And so, you know, I ended up getting done with it and I kind of compare it to a roller coaster. So, you know, I'll take you up the roller coaster, you know, like click, 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 and then I'll have something that happens that like kind of correlates to that. And then we'll have a, you know, going down the, down the roller coaster and then I'll have another little scenario. And so there's like twists and turns, but then I kind of really feel like this roller coaster that just all over the place, like the world's most thrilling roller coaster, if you will. Nice. Nice. Now, uh, now here's my big question. Can the book be found on Amazon? <laughs> so Amazon doesn't ban me. And, you know, actually it was like, hey, Amazon's going to like this because their name is in it. Um, you know, they're just going to give me free publicity. Um, they haven't banned me, but yeah, you can find Methmanger on Amazon on Amazon. Uh, it's in Kindle, paper, uh, paperback, hardcover, as well as the audiobook. And then the audiobook's also on iTunes and Audible. Great. Um, no, that's, uh, that's awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, so yeah, meth murder and Amazon talking with the author, uh, GS Jerry and, uh, um, uh, let's see. Um, you got, uh, your own website where people can, uh, can check you out or, uh, or is that still, yeah, uh, 
<laughs> so I do have a website. It's it's currently getting kind of refreshed, but the, you know what's out there is still out there. It's greatden.com. Excuse me. Great Den. G R A K. Yep, Great Den. You know, like the song, like it's Great Den, and then oh, it's okay. Great Den. <laughs> uh, but it's Great Den, and so the the main character in the book, his name is Mr. Great, uh, and so that's kind of where that comes from. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll put the uh, I'll put the link in the description so uh, people can find it real easily. Um, yeah. Let's see. And also, it's pretty interesting. Uh, you know, besides being accused of making meth, I actually am a pretty good chef, and so I have like little recipes up there on the <laughs> website. Um, I found a recipe for like Gordon Ramsay's eggs Benedict, and so I figured out how to make that. And so I share like little things like that on there, and uh, you know, the tab for all the recipes is my meth lab creation. So you know, okay. obviously playing <laughs> play, playing into it. You know, like obviously I make meth, right? You know, that was what they think, so I might as well just run with it. So kind of use that to my advantage in the website and you know i have my appearances so after we're done with this podcast when you share me a link you know i'll post that on the website as well right right um cool um yeah that's uh that's definitely a way of making uh making uh uh lemonade out of lemons uh for sure um <laughs> absolutely just going with the flow but uh um but yeah um Let's see what uh, what kinds of things have helped you uh, have helped you along the way um, to uh, you know what would you say helped you the most in writing this book that you've learned? Um, you know, the, the probably the biggest thing I learned was the marketing aspect. You know, everybody thinks you know you write a book and it's going to sell itself, and that's not really the case. And so, uh, me being who I am, you know, I do everything kind of ass backwards, and you know, I wrote the book. I, I actually released it. That's kind of a funny story in and of itself. You know, Amazon called KDP. Um, and so I, you know, I was going to release the book. I was going to do pre order for March 31st of last year. So I do the Kindle March 31st. And then I start getting the paperback and the hardback ready. And I'm like waiting for them to prompt me for a date as I'm going in to fill in all the information. Well, that's not what happens. And so I get to the end. It's like publish or contact. I'm like, okay, maybe after I hit this, it'll be like, when do you want this to go live? Nope, that's not what happens. So I actually ended up releasing the book like a month and a half early because I didn't know. And so it's basically like, hey, your book's going to be live in 70, 24 to 72 hours. And I'm like, all right, I guess it's going live. And so I just kind of just <laughs> let it let it go on its own and just started marketing it from there. Um, but it actually ended up working out. Um, you know, my mom, uh, she had early stage lung cancer, but she was old. Um, she actually passed away uh, last March. And so if I would have waited... Yeah, if I would have waited to actually release it until the March 31st, she, she would have, you know, passed on uh, before she even got to see that. So, uh, wow. you know, released kind of middle of February. I, I came and showed her the book and gave her a copy and signed it for her. Um, and then, you know, she was kind of gone about a month later. So, you know, wow. kind of worked out like that. Wow, that's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's amazing how, uh, how things can work out uh, sometimes. Yeah, even, even, you know, kind of more like divine intervention, you know, she passed early March and then uh, me and my wife found out we actually can have another baby kind of towards the end of March. So uh, wow. we just had a baby November 28th. So it's our fifth kid. Uh, wow. uh, Congratulations. Back, I didn't kill anybody, right? I did that murder one of my children. To... Yeah, five. Uh, so when the, when the meth murder on Amazon happened, I had four kids. I said, I have five now. So I didn't adopt <laughs> anybody. You know, I didn't take some kid off the street. Like all my kids are still here. Well, you're going to have to, uh, you're gonna have to write another book now that you got another kid, because uh, now you got yeah. another one to murder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, it was, uh, after I wrote this book, I was like, man, like, is it just me or like, you know, everybody has a story. I feel like everybody has those stories. Like, you're sitting around with your friends and you're BS, and you're like, hey, you never believe what happened to me, and right? I tell this story, and people are like, like, you're BSing, right? Like, you're totally making this up. I was like, I couldn't make this up if I tried. Like, this totally happened. And so, like, I wrote the book, and I was like, man, I got some other good stories. And so I actually am working on a, a, a new book. It's going to be like a, a reality TV show, but in a book, and I'm going to call it Hysterical Hangouts with the Hind Legs. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and so it's, it's an innovative concept. I was looking for, like, books that are, like, based on a reality TV show. And, you know, like, have, like, you know, it's basically, like, the people who were on the show that write the book. I'm like, well, that's not what this is going to be. It's literally going to have, like, hidden cameras. You know, crazy events and just different things happen all throughout. It'll be like little confessionals. I'm talking to the the camera, so I'm like, all right, I don't think there's anything out there like that. It's like maybe Hunger Games, but even still, like that's that's not the same thing. And so, 
uh, I think this is a, a pretty unique concept. And so I, I started writing about a chapter in it. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping to have that done before or time. Great. Um, now I'm just checking out uh, checking out your website uh, right now, greekden.com. And uh, I can see there's a store um, with uh, with lots of uh, that's the other great thing is uh, about uh, um, about uh, your uh, your attitude toward this is uh, there's definitely some great uh, some great <laughs> opportunities yeah. for uh, for uh, for uh, merchandising. Um, don't mess yeah. with me. <laughs> until I have had my coffee. Right? Until I've had so, my coffee. Know, like, yeah. And so you know, you're like, you have like, oh, hey, quit messing around. I was like, hey, I'm gonna steal that and just say, hey, quit messing around. And so, right. you know, I probably, I probably play on this, and people are like, yeah, this guy totally did it, right? But like, if you read the story, like, you'll see, like, it's like the world's worst perception meets reality kind of thing. And so, you know, someone perceives something, you know, hey, it must be true, and that's kind of absolutely what happened to me. And so. Um, you know, it's like a six month journey of just selling my house, but you know, you would not believe the things that you go through and just some of the shady characters that you meet along the way. Right? Like, it's almost like a running joke, right? Like, you know, how many real estate agents does it take to sell a house? And people would be like, one, I'm like, yeah, you would think, right? You saw that I tell them the story, and they're like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. That's funny. So, yeah, so go check out the website. There's lots of, uh, lots of great stuff on there. Um, just went over to the store um yeah, there's a the blog on there too yeah um yeah chicken wings yeah <laughs> yeah there's even a funny story about that you know i like to i like to cook i have a smoker at the house and i actually almost burned the house down one time making chicken okay. wings and so uh I, uh, I wrote a blog about it and basically kind of, you know, let people laugh, you know, kind of at my pain, you know, like Kevin Hart, you know, right? Laugh at my pain. Uh, but it's also <laughs> right, like uh, in my blogs, like you're going to laugh, but I'm also going to teach you something, right? Because uh, we have a fire extinguisher when this happened. And so if you don't have a fire extinguisher, what do you do? How do you put a fire out? And so, you know, I, you know there's a difference between baking powder, baking soda. One is good for cooking. One's good for putting out fires. And so, you know, I kind of <laughs> teach you about that. Um as well as some other things, right? Like, you know, I have like funny stories that have happened to me. So I'll like kind of take those, transform them and make like a, you know, learn from me and my mistakes or learn what not to do. Uh, there's a thing on there about me getting stabbed. And so, you know, uh, what's the rule about opening things, right? Cut away from yourself and you'll learn, from, <laughs> use me yeah. as a use case of what not to do because I stabbed myself right in the arm last year. Uh, well, I guess it was almost about two years ago. And uh, yeah, I got like a three inch gash. Uh, mess one of my tattoos up and so oh, no. kind of write a kind of write a blog about that right like hey i got stabbed on a thursday and so you know thursday's my thing i feel like everybody has a day it's like man this like if anything's going to happen it's going to be on this day right and so for me it's thursdays for whatever reason thursdays like are, are out to get me and so that's kind of what i try to do is write my blog on thursday and be like hey if this thing happened on the thursday i'm okay fine they actually do happen on a thursday <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, uh, um, I, oh man, this was years ago. I was, uh, I had gotten a, uh, um, a, uh, a bookshelf and I had to assemble it. It was like one of these Ikea things. And, uh, it had these yellow strap, the, one of the, you know, those, those tough yellow straps. And I had to use a, a box cutter to, uh, to slice open the, uh, um, the, the straps. And I ended up slicing, uh, slicing my finger open. And, uh, but I had, uh, oh, and it was, it was pretty bad. Um, and, yeah. uh, uh, but I had, uh, I had tickets to go to a members only event at Disneyland that night. And, uh, this was back in the nineties. Um, and, uh, <laughs> so I butterfly, put a butterfly bandage on it, wrapped it up really good, went to Disneyland. <laughs> Yeah, worry about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Went to uh, went to the uh, um, went to the um, the uh, the student health center at uh, at school the next day. <laughs> got eight <laughs> stitches. Oh man, you got it good. Yeah, I cut it pretty good. <laughs> I mean, it was no three yeah. inch gash, but uh, um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. I only got like four stitches and they're like, hey, come back in a week. I go back and then the thing opens right back up. I was like, screw it. Just butterfly that thing. Wow. And so I actually butterfly it. And I think the star looks actually better. It kind of fits in my tattoo. <laughs> um, I have a, 
No, I have a full sleeve on one arm and then I have a half sleeve on the other arm and the other half sleeve is a bunch of lightning in the mountains, you know, kind of for Colorado and Florida. Florida's the lightning capital of the world. Right. Everybody knows Colorado the mountains and the skis. And so where I stab myself is like right where the mountains meet the lightning. So it almost looks like it kind of fits <laughs> with the lightning. So it's like, hey, I guess I stabbed it in the right spot. <laughs> That's convenient. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can see it. I know where it's at, but if you like look at it at first glance, you really won't notice it. Right. <laughs> it could have been a lot worse, right? Because I like sat myself right in the middle of my forearm. And, you know, it's my left side. There's a bunch of like main veins and arteries and stuff. But luckily, nothing too bad happened. I mean, my I, I freaked my son out. He just gets his permit, and <laughs> I'm like, I'm calling him. I'm like, Jordan, Jordan. I need you, bud. And he comes downstairs. There's like blood everywhere. And I was like, got my arm like wrapped up in it. I was like, you're going to have to take me to the hospital. Uh, my wife was out like getting groceries or something. And so like <laughs> drive, start driving down the road. He's been, he's literally driven one other time. I was like, just listen to what I'm saying. We're going to be okay. <laughs> Call my wife. She's like, stop. You did what? Stop it. All right, pull over. Like I'll come and get you. And so she was right down the street. She picks me up, takes me to the hospital. We go to like an urgent care clinic and they're like, oh, what happened? You could tell, like, they're like, this this damn moron, right? Like, what were you thinking? Uh, <laughs> stitch me up, I go my separate ways. And of course, right, this is the day before my wife's birthday on top of it. She's like, you couldn't have done this, like, the day after, right, on April Fool's Day? This has been a hilarious <laughs> April Fool's Day. And I was like, yeah, next time, right, poor time. Right? That's hilarious. So how long have you been in Florida? <laughs> Uh, so I've been in Florida for a little over three years, but I'm actually, uh, you know, I'm originally from Florida, right. um, St. Petersburg area. So uh, I lived in Florida for about 18 years, joined the Navy. I was in the Navy for seven years and, you know, we moved from Florida to Virginia, okay. all the way out to California, back to Virginia. And that's kind of how we ended up in Colorado. Um, I was getting ready to get out. I got my bachelor's degree and kind of that was the goal for me is join the military uh you know get my school paid for and so i got my degree and we were kind of like hey where should we move to and my wife's like we should go to colorado i was like i've never been there it's a great idea and so <laughs> yeah she has family there we load up we drive from virginia to colorado and i remember like we're crossing into you know over from kansas into colorado i'm like where the hell are you taking me this is like the flattest place i've ever seen in my life like it's even more flat than florida right and so like we're driving like hour or two hour i'm like seriously like where the heck are you taking me and then about an hour outside of Denver, then you start seeing the mountains right. and stuff. I was like, oh, this is what you're talking about. And so we lived in we lived in Colorado for about seven years, and you know it, it, it was great until you know the meth and the murder happened, and then I was like, I can't wait to get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a military brat. Uh, my father was a, a Navy chaplain <clears throat> um, for uh, for a mess awesome. of years. Yeah, he did Navy, Marines, and then they uh, then he transferred to the Army. Then he did the VA hospitals, and uh, um, and now he's retired, happily. <laughs> yeah, I bet, yeah. Captains, is, that's a tough gig, right? I mean, you usually only get called when something bad happens. So. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. He's got some, uh, he's got some stories though, but. Uh, uh... <laughs> oh, I bet. I mean, I've got a few stories. I was actually, I was actually thinking about writing a book about the Navy at one point. Like, I've got, I've got some some funny stories yeah. as well. Like. I heard of myself. I fell in a hole one time, busted my eye wide open, like crazy stuff. Like I wasn't deployed or anything, like luckily, which is, you know, kind of uh, outside the norm, especially for being in as long as I did. But uh, yeah, my first duty station was shore duty. Then I got moved to Virginia Beach, uh, worked on a flight line on DC 9s, which are essentially like 747s. You know, they're big, like logistics planes. Those don't go on aircraft carriers. Right. And so, we had detachments and they were a month long, but they were all voluntary. And so I had three kids at the time. I was like, I, I don't care to go anywhere. Like I'm good where I'm at. Plus I'm going to school. So like you guys do your own thing. And so I actually never, <laughs> never ended up going, getting deployed anywhere. I mean, I, I think I ended up living in like 13 different places or houses, you know, all throughout my time in the military, but wow. I actually didn't get deployed anywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. My, uh, my father, uh, he was a, uh, he was a communications technician uh, first in the Navy. So enlisted back during uh, Vietnam and uh, um, never once went on a boat. That's awesome. Right. I mean, it's, it's so crazy because my, my brother-in-law, he was in the air force and he got deployed to Afghanistan and Iraq, like two different wow. times. And I was like, dude, like, the Air Force is the one who never goes anywhere either. Right. Like, how do we switch roles here? And so, yeah, I just feel blessed that I didn't have to go anywhere because, you know, it's tough being away from your family for that long. You know, six months at a time, you miss a, you miss a lot of things. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. The uh, yeah, I remember the deployments. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty tough. But uh, um, yeah, but yeah. So thanks for your service, definitely. Um, yeah, absolutely. And uh, even though you didn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, it's funny you said your dad worked on communications. Uh, I actually worked on uh, aviation, electronics, uh, communication, navigation equipment in the planes, and so oh, uh, short duty, obviously. You know, hey, something, something's broke. You guys fix right. it. Right. When I was in Virginia Beach at my last duty station, you're like, hey, we can't get this thing to go on, or we can't get this radar or simulator to work, and so we have to like run out there in the, you know, in the middle of, you know, it's freezing outside or it's like super hot. <laughs> run out to the flight line, troubleshoot, and be like, all right, this is broken, but you guys can still fly go. And so, um, actually going through, you know, working on aviation at the time, I didn't realize how much safer the planes are in the military versus what they are in the civilian yeah. world. And you know, I talked to a few people about this, and they're like, yeah. You know, that basically say unless the plane, you know, the engine is actually gone on fire, they just like send them things out. And you know, every time a plane comes into the military, you actually have to do like a major inspection. You have to walk around it. You have to check everything. Um, you have to do all these different things and have these different checks in order to even call it safer flight before it can go up into the air again. And so it's you know, usually an hour to two hours after one flight lands, whereas, you know, they send those planes out, you know, every 30, 45 minutes in the civilian world. So. So it's definitely different. It makes you wonder, like, right? Like, <laughs> not too safe to fly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've uh, I've heard some uh, some real horror stories. Haven't had anything bad happen to me yet. So uh, yeah. Um. So uh, what is it? Uh, knock wood. Uh. <laughs> right, knock on wood. Yeah, it's, it's funny though, right? Like my book is you know about meth, murder, and Amazon, but like there's also like funny parts of the book, right? Like. Uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but there's actually three different classifications for turbulence. And so yeah. as we get ready to essentially finally sell our house, we fly down to Florida, we fly into a bomb cyclone. And so like, unless you've been in like the Midwest or been around what that is, people are like, what the hell is that, right? Is that like an actual like bomb? No, it's like a weather disturbance. And so we actually flew into one. And so we experienced all these different turbulence from the time we lift off until the time we land in Florida. Wow. And so like I described, you know, like, hey, there's these three different types of turbulence. This is what a bomb cyclone is. And then I just kind of like take you on the flight with me as we like hit the bump. I'm like, oh my gosh, I almost pooped my pants. Oh, uh, it's even worse. Now we're going to die, right? And so like, it's just more suspense as you go along. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, the book sounds, uh, the book sounds hilarious. Um, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't wait to, uh, can't wait to check it out. Um, Yes, uh, once again, I'm uh, speaking with uh, G.S. Jerry, uh, author of, uh, of Meth, Murder, and Amazon, uh, which can be found on Amazon and uh, um, other uh, places where fine books are sold. Uh, you can also get the audio book on iTunes and Audible. Um, so, uh, yeah, how'd you find your, uh, how'd you find your uh, audio book guy? Your, uh, the guy who reads the book. <laughs> So that was probably the funnest experience of the whole thing. And so uh, I use a platform called ACAX. Uh, that's kind of through Amazon, um, but they're also linked to iTunes and Audible. Okay. And so you basically set up your project in ACAX, and then you can actually hold auditions. And so part of that is you are basically pick, hey, do I want a male or female to read the book mm -hmm. or do the narration? This is the kind of tone I want. Do I like want, want someone with a Western kind of style tone or more of an urban feel or someone that has really good comedic timing? And so I was like, all right, this is supposed to be funny. I want someone that's like got really good comedic timing. And so my, my book has some pretty crazy parts, right? Like there's actually like weird like uh, rhyme alongs and sing alongs. Like, you know, the song, uh, the, the chicken wing beat song, mm -hmm. the chicken wing, chicken wing, hot dog and bologna. <laughs> well, I make a remix of that in my last chapter about thanksgiving and turkeys so i call it a turkey wing beat and so it's literally like a audible rap and so i send like parts like that as part of the audition so you can send them like three like uh three different scripts to read and so i sent them that i sent them this interview that i did for the news uh after the whole mess and the murder situation happened and i had the guy read it and so i probably went through 10 10 auditions or so and people were doing book like, oh, they did all right they did all right but I finally found the last guy. He like took it and just owned it. Like he totally wrapped the wrapped the song in the last chapter. I was like dying <laughs> off. I was like, this is the guy. And so I was like, you know, he really took it on and owned it. And what's cool is, you know, once you select them, then they'll be like, hey, we'll give you a 15 minute clip of different parts that we've narrated. You give us some feedback as long as you're good with it. We'll then kind of go along the way. 
And so he, he gives me the 15 minute clip and uh, he starts doing my voice. And I kid you not, I sounded like a Mr. Crab from the Krusty Crab on uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> I was like, dude, we got to change that. Like, you can't have me sounding like that. Like, I get you're trying to change my voice, but like, I, I don't want to sound like you know, Mr. Crab. So, uh, you know, he was, he was great about it. He changed it. And so, like, uh, you know, it was a great experience. He did a really great job. Nice. That's hilarious. Mr. Crab. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was really funny like I, I mean i was cracking up when i was like i, I don't want to sound like that right i mean i want to kind of sound like it's just a normal person not like you know <laughs> a, a crazy different character i guess i'm a crazy character right? yeah yeah well with the with the uh the topic of the book uh yeah you you kind of qualify as a uh as a floridian i mean a crazy character i mean uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you know it's funny right you would think this would actually happen in florida you think so it, it's actually true. Those, those stereotypes about like, hey, it only happens in Florida, hundred percent, right? Because we have, we live in Land Lakes, and uh, all throughout, all around our neighborhood, there's a bunch of little ponds. There's tons of alligators out there. Yeah. My my son would be like, hey, Dad, there's an alligator. I want to go. I want to go chase them. I'm like, leave them things alone. I'm like, don't be chasing those damn alligators, <laughs> right? Like, I'm. I don't want to be on the news, right? So, Dad lets his son, you know, go chase alligators with his damn armpit off. Or right. Something. Like, I, I don't want to deal with that. Leave, leave the dang alligators alone. But it's actually <laughs> funny. You'll like see the alligators. And if anybody even like tries to go, because you can fish out there on the ponds, if anybody even like gets like within like 20 feet, those things are so skittish and they just jump in the water. So they're not like the, you know, the ones out in the water. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, still, they're big and have teeth. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not actually worried about those things. Heck no. But, you know, it's actually kind of funny because of my wife's uh, side of the family. Like, she has brothers that grew up in, uh, on the river. And so one of the rivers is, uh, you know, off the uh, Whistlecoochee River, which feeds into the Swanee River. And there's a lot of alligators, like, on their property. And so there's been times where we went to visit them when, when we weren't living in Florida. And they would be like, they'd have an alligator that they caught. They'd be like, hey, we found this thing. Come check it out. And then they'll, like, throw, like, a little tiny baby alligator at you. I'm like, guys, you're crazy. Like, what are you doing? And so that's kind of <laughs> going to be part of the basis for the story, right? Like, you know, of course, absurd character names, uh, but, like, really crazy scenarios like that that you're probably only going to experience living in, like, the country in some, like, cold dark town or something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, maybe uh, maybe one of your future books will be, uh, will be all about uh, the craziness of, uh, of Florida. But uh, yeah. true to life. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, it, that's going to actually be the uh, the place for the next book. It's not going to be, you know, Florida, F-O-O-R. It's going to be Florida, F-L-A-R, like something like that. Florida. So, um, you know, make it, sound <laughs> all, make it sound all country. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I haven't had the opportunity to live in Florida, but been there a few times. And uh, um, it's hot. yeah, it's humid. That's what that's that's the thing I I can't deal with uh, in uh, in places to live is uh, is humidity. That's why I love California so much. It's just yeah. No, well, um, we're getting humidity now. When uh, when I was a kid, uh, um, it was so dry I'd get nosebleeds on the regular. And uh, um, but now it's uh, uh, because of all the uh, all the lawns and uh, um, and uh, and water use. It, we've actually started to develop a, a slight humidity. It's nothing like what you guys get in Florida, but uh, but for us, yeah, it's like uh, 110 outside with like 125 percent humidity. Yeah, you just like get in your car and you start sweating. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. I'm born and raised here, so I'm used to it. But yeah, if you're not from here, I, I definitely get it. I remember we're coming back to visit a family when we were in Colorado. I'm like, man, was that always? Was this it's hot here and everybody's like yeah it hasn't changed I'm like man i gotta get used to this again <laughs> yeah i used to uh, uh we lived in uh, at fort campbell kentucky for a uh, for a while and uh, um i remember yeah. having uh, yeah it, it gets pretty hot pretty humid um yeah i remember uh i remember you could take a shower and still be sweat and be sweating in the shower it's been be so hot yeah, right as soon as you start right off <laughs> yeah. yeah i hate it it's no joke yeah yeah no kidding but uh, um, but yeah, that's uh, that's rough stuff. But uh, um, let's see what else. Uh, this is usually about the point when I run out of steam for a uh, for a, for a one to one interview. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, let's see what else. Uh, what are some other good things? What uh, what are some of your favorite books? 
Oh man, so it's kind of funny, right? The the fact that I wrote a book is kind of in itself like a joke because I'm the kid growing up that was like, oh, you gotta do this book report. I'm like, where's the movie at? I gotta go outside and go play sports <laughs> or go play basketball. Where, how can I watch this movie and like take this book report? And so like, I'm actually not an avid reader. Okay. Um, I read books all the time for like work and stuff. Um, so uh, my wife just has a, a, a few James Patterson books I, I, I've started a lot reading. You know, it's great detail. Um, but I also like kind of made it a point not to start reading more as I started writing mm -hmm. more because I didn't want my the way I write to sound similar to like Stephen King okay. or John Clancy or James Patterson. So I want to keep it kind of unique. Uh, I do want to read more. Um, but you no, know, I have five kids, so oh I can only do so much in one day, right? Right. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, I'd read more if there wasn't uh, so much to do. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, can ask some of the some of the save me questions um what's the best compliment you can give yourself uh the best compliment you can give yourself um probably that you're doing a good job right i mean um you know bad things happen all the time you know there's a lot of negativity out there but you know just trying to stay above the noise and stay positive um you know so I was going along right in the book. Like I would ask people like, Hey, can you read this? And you know, I had a lot of avid readers and I'm like, Hey, if this sucks, like tell me that it sucks. Right? I don't want to make a fool of myself. <laughs> um, and you know, I never really got any bad feedback. And so I'm like, all right, either it's good or people are like trying not to hurt my feelings. But like I adamantly told them, right. I'm like, this is terrible. Tell me. So I was like an idiot. And so no one ever did. And so then, you know, kind of kept going, but you know, I think that's the point, right. You got to just put yourself out there and, you know, especially if you're a writer or, or someone that deals with like content creation all the time, right? You can't be scared that someone's going to say anything negative about you, right? They, they do, right? They're obviously not your ideal customer or your audience. So, you know, just find that audience. Yeah. Yeah. Very, that's, that's a key to, uh, to good marketing is finding your audience and, uh, and yeah. speaking to them. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, like, right. Like I wrote this book, I'm right. Like who doesn't want to laugh and right? I mean, that's kind of part of it, but there certainly is a specific audience, right? There's plenty of people out there who've never seen Breaking Bad, but it's not just like Breaking Bad, right? Like it's it's comedy. There's also like pop culture references, and like I talk about movies like The Mask or uh, you know Mega Man. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, it's I've seen both movie. of those. <laughs> yeah, so there's references to that in there, um, right? And so if you haven't seen some of that, like right, uh, my father-in-law, he read it and he was like, I didn't get pick up on some of these references. I was like, well, here go listen to the audio book because the references are are kind of different. So I'll put things in like parentheses, like, oh, channels his best Megamind voice. Well, if you don't know who Megamind is, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Right. And so he listens to it, but he's like, I should have listened to that person. It's hysterical. And so like, you know, anybody's going to get a laugh out of it for sure. Are you going to understand all the references? Probably not. Um, but if you know what they are, then it's just going to kind of add to it. <laughs> okay. No, that's, uh, that's good to know. Um, yeah. Um, Well, I guess uh, we can uh, we can about wrap uh, wrap this up. Um, you know, this is uh, we we've gone for forty more than forty minutes. That's usually uh, usually means it was a pretty good show. <laughs> do you uh, do you have anything else to say to the nice people? Oh uh, yeah, um, you know, be different, right? Don't don't be the next whatever. Be the next you. Uh, you know, everybody is trying to figure out how to break into some kind of marker or whatever the things that set you apart is originality not being similar to some other guy so uh you know be yourself and try and do things differently you never know what's going to happen right like i never would expect this journey would have led to you know book awards and stuff right like i'm nobody from nowhere I and mean, i have one book award so now i can say i'm an award-winning author right? yep and so you know you never know where life's going to take you um and you know don't uh, don't always focus on the negative because that's just going to consume you trying to figure out how to see the positive and things. I think that's you know, probably the best advice I can give anybody because, you know, the news is so negative. They're always going to prey on the fear and the negativity. And, yeah. you know, people are always talking about this bad thing that happened. But if you just like, hey, this happened, what can I learn from it? it it's a way different perspective to have. And, oh, why is this happening to me versus, you know, what can I learn from this? And so, you know, be a constant learner and, you know, just stay true to yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's so uh, so many people get stopped from doing what it is they wanted to do because of fear of uh, of what uh, what other people are going to say. And so uh, you know, it's like keep your head down and uh, and you won't get shot. And it's like 
That's true. I mean, right? Yeah. Like you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. That's right. right. Michael Scott, Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. Um, but it's true, right? Like you never, you never know what's out there unless you put yourself out there. And right? if someone doesn't like it, okay, so what? Right? That's that's the whole point. Especially like if you're a writer, you would think that they would have test skin, but there's a lot of sensitive people out there, and so right, you can't be sensitive in an industry like this. Like you know, and not everybody's gonna love what you do, and that's okay. It's, not everything's for everybody. That's just how it goes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I've uh, I've learned that uh, um, that you have to kind of have the attitude you had when you were a kid. You know, when you were little, yeah. you could do anything when you grew up. Right. You know, it's like uh, it's yeah, true. and uh, they say the damnedest thing, mm-hmm. right? Like what comes to their mind, coming out of their mouth, right? They don't think, oh, oh am I gonna I'm just gonna rub someone in the wrong way? No, they just say it how it is, and that's what's great about kids, right? They're yeah. just super truthful, like that. Yeah. So uh, when I get an opinion, ask the kid. Remember, uh, remember what what it was like to be a kid and uh, and follow your dreams. That's right. You know, get out of that foxhole. But uh, uh... <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Don't be an ostrich. Looks like you had That's hand. right. That's right. So, um, yeah, but ostrich is delicious. Um... <laughs> uh, you know, I've never had it. Um, oh yeah. There actually is, you know, like. Like I said, I like to cook, but uh, there's a place up the street, the meat market, and they sell a lot of exotic meats. Like they'll sell alligator in there, uh, kangaroo, okay. camel hump, some other stuff. Now, I haven't tried it yet, but I was like, hmm, what, what the heck would you make? Like anytime I hear camel hump, I think of Russia right when they're like uh, <laughs> going out on the street and they're getting the noodles and they're like, oh, they're eating their oh, camel hump. I'm like, what the heck? But like <laughs> people actually eat stuff like that. And so. That's yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what camel hump would be like. Um, ostrich is very lean. And, uh, um, yeah. so it's like a, like a gamey, uh, it's like gamey chicken. Yeah. I was going to say, does it taste like chicken? Like I've had alligator before and it's kind of like, kind of like chicken, but like everything has its own little flavor. <laughs> but if you've never had it, it's always going to like, your mind's going to be like, oh, this reminds me of whatever this is. And it's right. always chicken, right? Like why does chicken taste like everything? Because chicken, our chickens don't taste like anything. That's why. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, yeah. The chicken you buy in the grocery store is so young it hasn't been able to develop its own flavor. Yeah, yeah it's crazy too, right? Like if you want to get like good chicken or mm-hmm. the organic chicken or the free range chicken, like you're paying like double the money. Oh, yeah. like you get penalized for trying to be healthy. Right. It's such a scam. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, yeah, um, yeah. That's exactly uh, exactly right. Uh, um, you know, uh, things are so. Uh, yeah, it, it things are set up to be unhealthy. It's uh, it's no uh, it's no wonder that I I got my way up to three hundred and eighty pounds. Wow. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a fatty. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, oh, it's it's definitely tough, right? I mean, because everything that's on sale is always the unhealthy stuff, right? Like, especially Christmas time. I like those Christmas tree cakes, but you yeah. know, I feel like Walmart has a racket on the Christmas tree cakes because you can't find them anywhere but Walmart. <laughs> and it's usually only like one Walmart in the area. Yeah. And so like, you know, I, I'll, I'll eat those from time to time, but you know, it's all about staying healthy or trying to at least kind of get up there and be active. Yeah. Uh, my, my, I have older sons, uh, 17 and 15, and they like working out. So they'll be like, hey, dad, let's go work out. I'm like, ah, oh, damn it. All right, let's go work out. And so, you know, I was I was really healthy whenever I was in Colorado. I was working out like five, six times at the gym, and then yeah. meth and the murder happened, and then COVID happened, and so it kind of went downhill from there. But now I have my own home gym, and then Peter's oh, nice. the house, so don't even have to deal with the, the gym. Yeah, my uh, my new office. I have to walk by the building gym to get to my office, and so uh, yeah. and I have access to the gym, and uh, so uh, like so yeah, so I can't uh, I can't make any excuses this uh, this time. I'm gonna have to uh, gonna have to do something there because yeah, that's right. I mean, even you know, thirty minutes is still something. Thirty minutes that's is still something, like, right? Like, yep. Even if you can't do you know an hour, you get a great workout, and you know you're doing thirty minutes is more than what you did if you didn't do anything. So yeah, just you know building those oh, yeah. good healthy habits. No excuses. Get into a rhythm. <laughs> those, what do they say? Excuses don't build results. That's right. Yep. So we're back to the you can do anything, but uh... that's right. You can do anything, right? You even write a story about meth murder and Amazon. That's fun. That's right. Who would have thought? So it's uh, G S Jerry, uh, meth murder and Amazon, breakden dot com, and uh, the link is in uh, the description. And uh, uh, really had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. It's always. Uh... 
great to meet new faces and you know get a chance to be on these podcasts and just you know talk with different people and you know have a fun experience because it's always a good time yeah so thanks again for having me on no my pleasure um yeah you should uh, schedule yourself for a return event maybe uh maybe we'll have our second guest and uh we'll have uh we'll have ourselves uh an even more interesting conversation okay all right yeah that, was, that sounds good yeah i saw you're like hey if you play an instrument or anything uh you can do that. I mean, I taught myself how to play the piano, but I don't have a piano in here. Oh, okay. I'm certainly not going to rap, you know, from my book. So I, I say that for professionals. Now, now, what did we say about fear? <laughs> <laughs> you can do anything. Right, you can do it. Right, like the water boy. I think I got a couple water boy references in there too. Awesome. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, I. I like Adam Sandler movies, but I've seen them all already. <laughs> yeah. it's, I mean, his comedy, it's his comedy, right? Like, the characters are different, but the, his comedy is usually the same. Yeah. Um, and then he's, as he's gotten older, right, he's trying to do the more serious thing. But, you know, like, that's kind of what I tell people all the time, right? If you're funny, just be funny, right? You don't have to be Stephen King if you're not Stephen King. That's right? true. You be yourself. If you're funny, play on your, play on your strength, because it's going to come out in your writing. If you're not funny and you try to be hum funny people probably aren't going to find it funny because you're just not a funny person and that's okay yeah. right write what you're good at be what you're good at write what you're good at yeah exactly just write that book <laughs> that's right just write it all right well thanks uh, thanks so much for being on um it's been fun yeah, yeah thank you bill appreciate it thanks for the opportunity. my pleasure Hope you have a, a great rest of your week cool you too um yeah and uh everybody uh be safe out there uh remember to wash your hands and watch the ending credits <laughs>